Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, right now, uh, what we are trying to do is the introduction to astronomy. I think that there are some students who can join the class because of the time. Uh, here we are Astro Space Tech uh, company. Uh, we just started in before last year. So we are dealing basically about the space education. Uh, we want to teach uh, students and non-students who, who are really interested in space science. So that is why we are trying to uh, teach students. Uh, this is the first course we are trying to teach, introduction to astronomy course. So uh, if we go down here, uh, according to the course, um, one month training here, we give around, uh, if you can zoom it a little bit, uh, there are eight courses, topic mainly we are giving here. Uh, one is, uh, what is astronomy? Today, we are trying to tear briefly discussions of what is astronomy, different types of astronomy. And then we will go to a difference between astronomy and astrology, because there are two, these two are very misconception regarding in today today's science. When people ask you regarding, let's say that, uh, what do you study? When you say you study astronomy, people often think that you are doing astro astrology. Just like the people will see your palm and will tell you the tell you the futures. Those are the things. And then the next thing is that after different types of um, astronomy, uh, there are two types, theoretical and observational. And they are subdivided around it, uh, subdivided into theoretical astronomy. And then observational is also around subdivided again. We will explore one by one each of them again in the session. And then uh, we will go again into the scientific method. Because first thing is that whenever we study science, uh, the most important thing which is not taught in the lecture in the university or in the school is the scientific method. Because these are very important tasks which we should follow in our, uh, when we study science, we need to know what exactly meaning of the scientific method. There are around four steps, uh, which we will explore in the later on. And then the second step is the history of astronomy. Uh, we will explore uh, ancient astronomy to modern astronomy. So we will go briefly about the history of astronomy in the second session. And uh, in the third, um, uh, we have the from the origin of universe to the end of everything. This is goes under the cosmology. Cosmology. So we have to start from the Big Bang theory, and then we will talk about the shape of the universe, and then what will be the end of the universe based on the scientific method. We will mainly deal on that, and also we will look upon the in the religious perspective about the origin of uh, universe and the end of everything. And then in the fourth chapter, we will go to the exploring the solar system. Uh, in this, uh, there are two types which we can categorize ter 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 terrestrial astronomy, uh, planets and what, sorry, terrestrial planets and giant planets. We will uh, explore the solar system one by one. And also we will talk about the asteroids, a brief history of asteroids, how to, organize and how to calculate how much it is. All those things we have to go under again in the solar system. There are different types of, uh, not only the planets, uh, we will also explore about dwarf planets and then asteroids, meteors, meteorites, and all those things we have to explore in the solar system. And then in the fifth steps, uh, surrogating equipment and night sky observations. Here we will also talk about the, uh, how to spot the big deeper or some measure by using telescope as well as by using naked eyes. And also in night sky observation, we will talk about the, uh, how much uh, the night sky uh, we are able to watch and if, in how much degree we can see the uh, moon and the phases of the moon, we will categorize each of them. And then in the sixth uh, chapter, we will explore about the moons and the ellipse. There are two types of ellipse, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. And also we will talk about the history of eclipse from ancient grids to the modern, modern time. And also we will talk about the phases of the moon. All those things we will talk about. In the seventh chapter, we have the life cycle of stars. Here we will talk about the formation of stars. And also we will go about the uh, black hole. We will go uh, after the formation of stars, we will go to black hole. We will go deeper into black hole 
and then we will explore about the entropy of the black hole and the singularity and the quantum integument, how much uh, information is stored on the horizon of the black hole, which is called a uh, super translation, which we expect more in the future. And then in the last chapter, uh, we will talk about the astrobiology, the search for life in the universe. Uh, this is this also goes under the astronomy, but uh, I'm putting this one in the, a different topic. And uh, here we will talk about the uh, uh, intelligent life in the universe <clears throat> and lots of stuff. And here, this is a brief introduction of the topic. And right now we can start about the first chapter: what is astronomy? So uh, if I ask you, all of us in the even MS students, even PhD students, all of us, if I try to ask is what is astronomy? everybody will say that uh, the study of the universe, okay? But most of us may not know about uh, the origin, which means that their astronomy comes from two Greek words, uh, which mean astron, uh, that is stars, and nomos meaning law. And this means that we are study astronomy means the law of the stars. In short, we can say that the study of the universe. And if we go uh, under this, what is astronomy? The next slide. And then we can see uh, their uh, two types of astronomy. <clears throat> Next slide. There are two types of astronomy. One is that there, there is a theoretical uh, astronomy and other is the observational astronomy. Here is there, I put these two here. If you see, why should you study astronomy? There are different, when you try to differentiate between those who study astronomy and those who are not study astronomy, they are different life. When you, here it is written, Astronomy teaches you humility. When you learn about the stars, planets, galaxy, etc., you will realize that ego, jealousy, and pride are what is. These are the human things. If you stay on art here, we have this kind of thinking. We don't have, you know, this kind of humility. But if you concentrate mainly about the stars every night, the way you live will be differently. When you look into infinity, you will realize that you are more important than what people do older. Right now, if you see uh, the art, uh, if you just a little bit in the political situation, if you go deeper in that one, the humanity section, people mainly focus uh, right now, there is war different between one country and another country. So those are the things when you try to concentrate about the astronomy, you will realize that all those things will, is useless fighting its others, fighting among its country. Even the cars again say that all those things are useless. Here, if you see types of astronomy, it's written here, theoretical astronomy um, mainly deals with analyze the systems that have evolved through the existing data. Uh, theoretical astronomy mainly deals with the data of the astro observational astronomy. Observational astronomy is by using telescopes, uh, observatory, um, and then planetary, we can study directly the stars, planets, galaxies, everything by using observational astronomy. But by collecting all those data, we study theoretical observational uh, astronomy. Here is the, um, these are the pictures uh, which I took last year. And then if we go down here, this is the moon. By using all these data, this is just a simple clip. By using all this data, even the Galileo studied the phases of the moon and he drew by himself. The first telescope he used is the Newtonian telescope, which was used by the Galileo Galilei. So this, um, uh, a little bit up once, you will see different types of astronomy here, uh, theoretical astronomy. Here, astrophysics is there, astrochemistry is there, astrobiology is there, planetary astronomy is there, extra galactic astronomy, galactic astronomy, stellar astronomy, solar astronomy, Astrometry, this is uh, totally different. I don't think that many of us are about this one. And the last one, archaeoastronomy. Astrophysics deals with, uh, astrophysics is uh, similar to cosmology, uh, which deals with the um, study of the universe, the big bang to the end of everything. And then astrochemistry is the chemical composition of the stars and everything we studied here. And astrobiology deals mainly the life in the universe. Uh, planetary astronomy is, uh, the name research suggests that uh, it is the study of the uh, planets or sun. Uh, sun, is, uh, sun is also inside the 
uh, planetary system, not exactly, but uh, which also deals under, under this one planetary astronomy in one way. And also uh, the second, uh, the next step is the extra galactic astronomy. This is the study of the galaxies, which is beyond uh, Milky Way galaxy, our own galaxy. Galactic astronomy is the study of the Milky Way galaxy, only one galaxy. And stellar astronomy is the uh, study of the uh, evolution of stars, formation of stars and the dying of stars, everything we have to study here. Solar astronomy is suggests that the study of the sun. And astrometry, number nine. Here, this deals with, uh, in the instant that we use this uh, astrometry as the study of the distance between uh, one star to another star. It's the kind of measurement we use. Our Kyo astronomy is the last step, is the study of the ancient observatory, just like chicken, Ija, and then um, in, in stone hands, and all this is the study of our Kyo astronomy which steers are uh, mainly uh, with the study of stars and stones. By using the, it's a kind of architectures, you have to see the ancient observatory. And by using all those data, we study uh, archaeoastronomy, which is uh, astronomy is also one of the oldest science. You can say these are the theoretical observ um, astronomer. Uh, this is Kars again. And if we see Kurs again, Kurs again is one of the famous uh, theoretical astronomy astronomer in this world. And the next step is that if you can go down, you will see uh, Stephen Hawking. Uh, this is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he is also a theoretical astronomer. Uh, if you go down, even uh, Stephen Hawking. He is also an astronomer as well as cosmology. Astronomy, uh, just like we told before, that astronomy has subdivided into the different types of things. but. Uh, Stephen Hawking is a cosmology, and the last one is the uh, Michio Kaku. He's also one of the famous uh, theoretical um, astronomy. And then uh, next step is that uh, we will deal about uh, observational astronomy. When we talk about observational astronomy, uh, yeah, I think that most uh, you will easily come out the name Galileo Galilei, Kepler, Tycho Brahe. All those people are mainly uh, observational astronomers. And also here, if we study about observational astronomer, it mainly deals with light, electromagnetic spectrum, which we will do in the later on. And there are different six types of observational astronomy. One is radio astronomy, infrared astronomy, ultraviolet, uh, optical, X-ray, gamma ray. Yeah, these are the six um, subdivided into observational astronomy. This is the Tycho Brahe and Galileo Galilei. We will study uh, mainly in the later section here. The first thing is that here is electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, first, we need to understand what is light. All those things also we will study in the next lectures, but uh, I just want to highlight it. Uh, what is light? Everybody believe that light can be either in wave as well as in particles. But in the 17th century, uh, it was Isaac Newton who first proposed light as a particle and Christian Heisen as light is a wave. But in the 19th and 20th century, uh, Einstein relativity which comes and Maxwell and Young double slit experiment. All those uh, things prove that light, they have both light particles and as well as wave. Uh, this is the double uh, split experiment, Young double slit as experiment here. Uh, it is, uh, it is proof that uh, light as a particles in simple way, we do not need to go into deeper section because this is uh, just the introduction of the astronomy. So you, I just want you to understand that light can be either in both particles as well as in wave. And light arriving at screen, <clears throat> I don't need to read this one. And then here in the uh, James Maxwell, he saw that mathematically in 1860 that uh, light can be the combination of electric and magnetic fields. Uh, when um, light can be a particle, when the magnetic terms accelerate, when it is in stage, light can be in uh, can be in the particles, uh, it forms particles. But uh, when it, it accelerates, it creates wave. That means that light is in the form of wave. And in the next step in 1905, uh, Einstein calculated the energy of particles of light, photon. <clears throat> photon is actually whatever we receive from the sun, uh, it emits a kind of photon. This is called energy. So uh, I just give the equation here. We don't need to understand it. Energy of photon, uh, AZ upon lambda. So if, if, if it is, if the wavelength is high, energy will be late. 
it, it is the inversely proportional energy in lambda. Just like our wavelength and frequency, these, are, these two are also inversely proportional. When there is longer wavelength, there should be less intensity or less frequency will be there. <clears throat> Here we know that the speed of light is three like kilometer per second. This is by using the energy photon. Uh, just like I told you before that there are two types of pro properties of light, wavelength and um, here we see the wavelength and frequency. These two are inversely proportional. Just like we told this, this comes under observational astronomy. When we study here is the sun. Visions, I, I, I just wrote here, uh, different types of here. Uh, if you go up a little bit here, the slide about the sun. Yeah, these are different types of here. If you zoom it, you will see uh, it's this, uh, this is the picture of the sun, but in optical, uh, it becomes vibe in X-ray, it becomes redder, different types of state, but different wavelength. This exactly electromagnetic spectrum. We need to understand electromagnetic spectrum in order to understand observational astronomy. Here is the Milky Way galaxy. These are different. It's of them is Milky Way galaxy, but different wavelength and different electromagnetic spectrum. And if we go down a little bit, uh, we can easily recognize uh, different wavelengths, there are 400 nanometer to 700 meter nanometer, which, uh, which is visible only by using the cat eyes. But if you want to see the smallest particles, we need to use a uh, different wavelength, different electromagnetic spectrum. Here you can see that uh, these two glasses, you cannot recognize it, which one is hot and which one is cold, unless you use infrar infrared ray image, different electromagnetic spectrum. And also in the second one, you can easily tell the difference between the cold-blooded animal and the warm-blooded one by using different wavelengths. These are the importance of uh, using observational astronomy and electromagnetic spectrum. And also uh, here is a different, uh, you can see familiar materials often behave differently with regards to infrared light. Uh, uh, here the polythene bed is opaque uh, to light, but in transparent to infrared. Uh, when you use by using infrared light, when you see uh, this um, polythene bag, which is transparent, you cannot uh, recognize, uh, detect by using um, infrared light. Uh, this one is tougher. Which colors of man in will show up? And in the second one, also there are different types of light. If you go a little bit this line, you will see different, uh, yes. A little bit down. Uh, if you go down there, you will see uh, different colors, but by using electromagnetic spectrum, here it's a black, blue, green, these are written. Uh, but if you use by using different types of electromagnetic spectrum, each one has a different uh, projection. You can see in different, like here is also the cluster, if you see below one. The, one is the galaxy. This is the Milky Way galaxy, but if you see an optical, uh, astronomy, optical uh, light, it looks different the same way in infrared lights. What we want to understand here is that a light, by using light, we can uh, see what uh, human being cannot see. It. There are different types of a wavelength, depending on the wavelength, it has different properties. That, that what, what does it mean? Here, uh, if we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, the most famous one is Doppler effect. Here is the thing that uh, most of the very famous example is that when the call approaches to you, uh, there is a much um, longer wavelength because just like we told that longer wavelength means high intensity or high frequency. These two are inversely proportional. When one is low and the other one will be higher in the same way. When one, it's just like uh, when there is particles, there is also anti-particles. Uh, particles and anti-particles are there. There are some um, some type of particles which we cannot see by using the cat eyes, which is called anti-particles. Uh, particles, how can we know that there is anti-particles even though humans cannot detect it by using our technology? But this can be, we can study by using lamb effect. Uh, this is the reason which you can recognize there is anti-particles. Uh, when we study the singular, singularity of the black hole, we will do many about this one also. And also in the here, uh, scientific method is here. And the next one, after study as observational astronomy, 
theoretical astronomy. Um, before that, uh, when we talk about the Doppler effect, uh, if there are two types, you can say that. There, one is blue shift, another is red shift. If we talk about the origin of new universe, when it happens, the Big Bang, uh, a point of singularity, most of the misconception is that people thought that Big Bang started at a single point. No, that's wrong. The thing is that Big Bang singularity started in the space-time curvature. In every space-time, Big Bang happens continuously at the same time, not on a single point. This is the misconception. Why we know that uh, there is accelerating of the universe? Why the universe is accelerating? Why, why we can easily recognize it? This is by using observational astronomy. When, just like we say that uh, when the light, when the curve is moving away from us, we hear the intensity of light decrease. Wavelength, even the wavelength. Wavelength is uh, very late. When it, it approaches to you, wavelength is bigger. Light, uh, light you will say that here, longer wavelength when it approaches to you, which means less intensity. When it is away from you, uh, which means less wavelength and then higher intensity. The universe is in redshift. Because of that, we know that the universe is expanding due to dark energy, which we will deal later in the section as well. And then the, and the next step is that after different types of astronomy, we have to talk about the scientific method. We really, really need to understand this one because uh, when we talk about the different types of um, astronomy and astrology, here it comes the many scientific method you need to understand. There are around uh, five steps. The number one is that uh, the first step is the uh, identify the pattern. Uh, this is, uh, if you zoom, you can see it. And the second step is that we have to gather the data. The third is hypothesis. And then we have to test the hypothesis. If it experiment is right, we have to go to the next step. Does the new data agree? And then we have to test the hypothesis again. Then it becomes theory. Yeah. If you go to the next step. Uh, yes. If you have any questions, you can ask me uh, after the sessions, okay? And then here you see the first step is the gathering evidence. Whatever the observational astronomy has done, uh, they gather the data. And then the second step is that we have to, you know, we have analyzed the data again. And then it, the next step is that it comes to, after analyzing the data, we have to test the hypothesis. Hypothesis is something that uh, uh, you cannot uh, prove, but you just hypothesize. You can just say that, uh, all those people who watch, uh, hello? Yes. Hypothesis is something that let's say that uh, every person who watch movie, Netflix, uh, those people becomes very fake. I say that, but nobody prove it. But I cannot just say hypothesis, but I can hypothesize that one. Uh, but when I try to prove that one, I have to test that hypothesis whether only those people who watch Netflix or movies become fake. In the white area, in the view, the cosmic perspective, in the widely view, if you check it, the analyze the data hypothesis, and then you will see that not every person who watch movies are fake. There, there are also people who doesn't watch, who doesn't like movie at all, but they become very fake. Okay, this, it means that the hypothesis is wrong. That means this cannot become a theory. But if all those people who watch are just like Einstein relativity, E equal to MC squared, in whatever way you study, this becomes right. Energy can interchange with mass. This is called uh, theory because it can, you can test this hypothesis again and again repeatedly, but the results still remain same. This is called theory. But the difference between astronomy and other subjects, other science is different. In physics, chemistry, biology, you can study this one under the uh, um, laboratory and you can test the hypothesis as well, everything. But in astronomy, what we study is that we study which we cannot see, which we cannot touch see far away, just like the stars, the planets, uh, this, we cannot prove it. But we study by using light, electromagnetic spectrum. And then that can be 
uh, evaluate the and we analyze the data again, which is used by a theoretical astronomer. This is the difference between other um, science subjects in astronomy because astronomy is very unique subjects. And then after scientific method, if you study the difference between astronomy and uh, astro astrology, astrology is just a pseudoscience, but astronomy based on scientific methods. If you say that uh, astronomy is the scientific examination of the universe, but uh, astrology attempts to predict one futures due to the position of specific celestial bodies. Celestial bodies means the planets uh, and even the sun, asteroids, matter, meteorites, all those things are celestial bodies. Of course, in astronomy we do, these celestial bodies affect the earth. Uh, because of the moons, uh, it changes. Um, seasons, the sun, the season, daylight, the moon, tides, asteroids, all those things affect the earth. But here you can see that in astrology, they deal with unknown forces in the celestial bodies, which can determine our human characteristics and traits. It, this is just like uh, phrenology. Phrenology in the 17th century, it is in the Edinburgh. People thought that uh, phrenology is the study of the human skirt. By studying the human skirt, you can predict the human characteristics, whether he will become the slave or he will become the king. All those things which can be determined by phrenology in the 17th century. But phrenology is same as similar as this astro astrology, which is not mainly based on the science. It is a pseudoscience. Pseudoscience means which, is, which doesn't follow scientific method. This is astrology, similar to phrenology. Uh, in the phrenology, common people, this phrenology people told the people that all these people, common people will become slaves. Okay, and they cannot overcome the higher people, just like high case, uh, their caste system there in the ancient story and the birth uh, in Inbad as well. Because of the people thought that even though they have the capacity to become uh, the king, the capacity to become brilliant, they cannot because of the phrenology. They thought that they will remain still the same. It's just like, uh, it was one story uh, I just remember, um, eager, they're eager, one day the eagle left uh, an egg on the earth and he accidentally left it. And a person collect that egg and put in the chicken. And then the hand used to hex that uh, eager egg and the eager egg, the chicks, they all um, gather together. One day they used to roam around. That eager chicks, the eager baby, his, uh, he saw, uh, he or she saw the eager, which is flying in the sky. He, he said that, he thought that, uh, I wish I could fly like him in the in, in future because uh, he doesn't know that he is an eager. It's just like phrenology told that you cannot fly. Even though just like the people, you human beings, we cannot explore the universe. It's just like that. Right now in the human uh, history, and uh, we understand only 4% of the universe. The rest, are uh, which consists of dark matter, which is 26%, and the dark energy is around 69%. These are the things, out of this 100 person, the universe which we understand is just only 4 person as of now. If we see that 17th century, 19th century, even in 19th century, uh, it just developed the mechanics and thermodynamics because of that, uh, it started the industrial revolution, just like machine age. We have a steam engine locomotive and industrial revolution. But in the 20th century, the same way, we have a loss of electricity and magnetism because of that we can go to the moon, uh, we have electric electricity. Uh, we we can have uh, TV radios and generators. But in the century, 21st century, we have transistor and lasers. Right now, we have the quantum physicists because of that. We have some supercomputer, the internet, GPS, telecommunication, all those things we can uh, communicate each other as of now. This is the importance of technology which has uh, been developed since century years ago. This follow mainly based on scientific method, but Astrology, which doesn't follow uh, scientific method. Here, astrology claim you're born under the sign in the sun, in the constellation. In astrology, we have this type of horoscope. We call it in every magazine, every newspaper, you will see that we have to go to the priest and you have to look, uh, you will show your palm and they will predict your future. But wh why not include closer by asteroids and why do astrologers now include Uranus, Neptune and Pluto when they were not included in the previous one? These are the things which question you have to ask. If astrology is 
going to be correct, you have to influence because the gravitational field on the planet, which doesn't affect in humans, you cannot determine the human characteristic and traits by using the gravitational field of the uh, planetary system, just like gravitational field of the Jupiter, which is 0.0001 inch, which doesn't affect on humans. But as Felicity say that these are the things uh, which human, uh, they predict the future of the human. They will see your palm and they will predict. This is mainly based on uh, pseudoscience, not based on scientific evidence. And if you see that precision, however, the sun, if you see here, however, the sun is not a constellation due to art precision. If you say that precision is the art rotation, which undergo 26,000 years to complete one precision only. Uh, this also we will do uh, in the archaeoastronomy. But the main thing is that precision is the circular motion of a planet tilted axis. The planet tilted its axis. In every planet, it has precision. Yeah. It's just like gyroscope. Uh, when uh, astronauts or when you want to go to the space, you need to have gyroscopes. Without gyroscopes, uh, you cannot determine the directions where you are, where is the south, east, west, north. But in the gyroscope, if you point, um, not uh, that will point even in space, it will point not with that uh, what that point at one. It's just like fixed point. There, there should be fixed point in gyroscope, the same way in the precision. And the next set is that uh, we will study about the basic objects in the universe. Uh, first thing is that the stars. <clears throat> stars are glowing balls of gauge. This is another way we call. Uh, collapsing objects emitting large balls in the objects, uh, which uh, the stars form by using the fusion, fusion reactions. And also we need to know that the sun which we are having the Milky Way galaxy, this is also called third generation of stars. What we want to say is that the sun is also a part of stars, which we want to say. Here in the planets, <clears throat> uh, their uh, planets are moderately large object orbiting stars. If you see the celestial bodies, every galaxy, every celestial bodies in the universe, they are in spherical in shape because spherical is very perfect and very symmetric. If you use a circular, just like in the ancient um, Ptolemy, he proposed the geocentric model, and the Nicholas proposed heliocentric model. If you see geocentric model, it said that the Earth is the center of the universe. But actually, uh, the Earth is not the center of the universe. After Nicholas Copernicus proposed that heliocentric model, it's not the Earth which is the center of the solar system, but instead it is the Sun which is the center of the uh, universe. Not not solar system. You say the universe, but that is also wrong. And also, it says that the orbit is in elliptical orbits. <clears throat> Bef uh, this is proposed by Kepler's before that, uh, Tycho Brahe and all those people, they, they thought that, uh, Ptolemy and all, they thought that the Earth, all the planets revolve around the sun in a circular orbit, which was wrong. But science is also not perfect, uh, but by using scientific method, we can understand that how much accurate it is. The more accurate the answer is, we can rely on that evidence. That is the reason. <clears throat> Planets uh, we have here is a satellite. Even the moon is also a part of the one of the satellite. <clears throat> a satellite orbits a planet. These objects are also called moons. Yes. And the next step is asteroid. We have all those things inside the solar system. Asteroids are rocky debris in the solar system. Most of them are contained in the asteroid bear. If you know that asteroids are many uh, are residing between uh, Mars and Jupiter. Uh, if you see all those, the sum of all these asteroids, if you combine, it, it consists of the four percent of the mass of the moon only. But all these things, even the asteroid is very, very dangerous for the human. If you saw the ancient history of the dinosaurs, and it says that it was the impact of the asteroid because of the dinosaurs were extinct. Because of that, right now, even other companies, different types of startup, uh, they, they propose it to prevent from um, this uh, other celestial bodies from space, especially asteroid and ore. And also we have here meters. Meters is a piece of rocky, which bounds in the atmosphere. 
This is a type of the asteroid. When asteroids are flying, which becomes major. And also depending on the elements, it produces different types of colors again. You will see here, zoometric meteor shower. You will see in the iron, calcium, sodium, magnesium, they have different colors. And the second step is meteorites. Actually, met meteorites, when it actually landed on the earth, it is called meteorites. Meteorites. This is a meteorite from the ancient cross of Mars, and it's all signs of water. All these celestial bodies are very useful when we when we take the evidence. Uh, we can study, we can understand the life and the age of the the age of the planets, and we can study the history of the universe as well. Uh, comet. Uh, this uh, comet is a piece of ice and rocky that originates far beyond the orbit of the Earth, uh, which is uh, beyond the Earth. It exists beyond the Earth, mainly in the old cloud and copper cloud, beyond the solar system. Beyond the solar system, this comet usually uh, come. Because of that, this Halley's comet, it, uh, it doesn't come often, it comes seldomly, not every night. You cannot easily see this one, comet. But you can see meteorites every single night. You can see which, uh, which is exists in the circ circumpolar. You can say that circumpolar is a thing in the stars that are uh, just like the Orion, the Hunter, the three stars, which many most of the time you can see throughout the year. These are in the fixed stars, in the fixed star. So you can see easily. In the solar system, uh, there are eight planets we have in the solar system. Um, the planets also we have, uh, even Pluto was considered before as the uh, planets, but right now which uh, we are discarded because of the orbits. And the second, uh, the last, uh, stellar system. Stellar system is a stars and other objects such as planets and other stars and other materials that orbit. And galaxy. Galaxy, there are different types of galaxies again, uh, elliptical and spiral galaxies. Uh, we have to study briefly in the later. And galactic, galactic cluster is a collection of galaxies gravitationally bound, super cluster. If you go step by step, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, solar system, and beyond the solar system, you see Oort cloud, and then galactic cluster, and the next is super cluster, which is the combination of galaxies and other galactic clusters. And then we come to the observable universe, which is called universe. The universe is all matter and energy and it's called the cosmo. Sometimes we also call cosmo the universe. Observable universe, if you study deeply about the origin of universe, there are universe and cosmo. These two are different things. Mm, the universe started at the Big Bang, but not at the cosmo. Cosmo perspective is a little bit bigger. Observable universe, the universe which we understand is by using a correct technology, we can study this much only. But if you see about this Cosmo, Cosmo is uh, the things that just like uh, M theory, string theory, which is beyond the origin of the universe. Most of us thought that uh, Big Bang theory is the origin of the universe. But uh, in 2020, uh, Nobel Prize physics winner, uh, Rosa Penrose said that uh, Big Bang theory is actually the beginning uh, of the end of the universe. It says that it is one end of the universe it starts again. It's just like the different types of uh, universe, parallel universe uh, is there. String theory suggests that there are only uh, 10 dimensions, but uh, M theory suggests that there are 11 dimensions. However, right now we are living in the four dimensions. Four dimension is our time, uh, which we'll also discuss in the relativity. These are the thing. When you study these, all those things, uh, celestial objects, uh, what, what are the celestial bodies in the universe? The thing is that you can consider step by step, just like uh, you, you stay in Chhattisgarh and then you stay in India, you stay in Asia country, uh, you stay on the earth, and then you stay in the solar system, uh, you stay in the Mercury galaxy, and then you go step by step. It says that you have to, depending on the things that you have to go uniformity regularly, ascending order to descending, descending order to ascending order. And then we study all those things in order to understand when we go deeper into the later chapters, uh, these are the things, very basic things. We need to understand it. And then here is the scale of the cosmos. That's why like I told you about and later before that. To understand the scale of the cosmos, uh, we have to understand some uh, distance between the solar system. And then we will go into uh, galactic 
uh, uh, beyond the solar system. Here is the distance between the solar system. The distance between the R and the moon is about 230,000 miles, you know. And then the closest between R and Mars, 32,000 miles. And then the next is the R and Sun is 93,000. So the distance between Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun, and the Sun is about 30, 36 million. And the last is Neptune. We have different types of, if you see here, you see that the distance between its planets is different. And because of that, since uh, if we use the measurement of the orbit we have in the current technology, we cannot use it because of that. In astronomy, since we study in um, macro world, it, the celestial object, the distance between one star to another star, the distance between space time, the distance between uh, one galaxy to another galaxy. Because of that, we need to adopt the different types of measurement. Because of that, we use astronomical unit. In other words, astronomical units, which is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Because we use just like that, uh, you can use a one foot equals one million miles. The same thing which we can adopt in the environment on the Earth. If you can consider one foot equal to one mile and you can go there, uh, New Delhi to uh, US, you can, you can study here. And then the distance between will be approximately a Mercury, uh, Mercury to Jupiter or something like that. It will be approximately will be there. To simplify distance in our solar system, astronomer use uh, astronomical unit. This is which I told you before. <clears throat> and then if you go for the other numbers, there are for the diameters of the three solar system bodies. First, our Earth's diameter is just less than 8,000 miles. Uh, Jupiter diameter is also there, and the sun diameter is also there. We study, we need to, the, the thing is that we don't need to memorize all those things. The idea is not memorize size and distance here. Rather, it is appreciate the grand scale of the universe within which we live it. These are the things that you don't need to memorize all these distance between and all. The only thing you need to understand here is how much the scale, the beautiful scale of the cosmos and all. If you go the beyond the solar system, uh, the closest uh, star is the Proxima Centauri. And, a little bit up, uh, constellation. If you go there, yes. <clears throat> if you see here, because of this great distance, astronomer use another measure. If you go beyond the galaxy again, we cannot rely on astronomical unit anymore because the universe is very vast, hugely vast. Because of that, we use again light year. Light year is the distance light travels in one year. Uh, this sounds like a time measure, but it is not. Most of us thought that uh, uh, light year is a measurement of time. No, it is the distance light travels in one year. Uh, There's a misconception we need to understand. And the next step is the constellation. <clears throat> if you see the night sky in the universe, you will see that there are around eight, eight constellations in the universe. What I mean to say is in the observable universe, whether there is another universe or not, we will try to talk in the later section again. Here you will see eight, eight constellations. <clears throat> Even early people store stories about the saps and patterns they show in the stars, like connect the dots. Uh, suppose if you see the night sky, if you connect one star to another star, just connecting, you will come to come out to some kind of pictures. Uh, and then if you can connect it, sometimes you will be, you will try to come out the shape of the that low shape, and sometimes it will come out the shape of the uh, animal shape. If you can do that, and then you can make constellation. These are good constellation. Today, astronomers recognize 88 official celestial constellations, which you can see here. Uh, these are taken from many of the um, historical constellations. Matter of today, it is official constellation of Western European in design and history. <clears throat> Whereas some constellations are easy to recognize, most are not. Uh, constellation basically connecting the dots or stars that made up this constellation. To be able to see, if you want to see all these 88 constellations, uh, you must have to stay in the equator of the earth. Because if you don't, if you stay in the Northern hemisphere, Southern hemisphere, you cannot see all these Eight constellations. In order to uh, see this eight constellation, you must stay in the equator of the Earth. 
Many people draw civilization identified patterns in the stars. For example, the constellation we now call Orion the Hunter, Hunter I mean, uh, which was uh, different shapes by different people. In China, they call Shen, the supreme warrior. In Egypt, uh, uh, they call Orions or Osiris. In India or Hindus, we call Skanda, a celestial generate riding epicot. If you say, observe in the night sky, you will see that three stars. That three stars are uh, which is in the perpendicular, in the line, ecliptic line, plane line. That is called Orion the Hunter. Uh, depending on the uh, positions on the stars, on the not on the stars, on the surface of the earth, people are uh, cool and every civilization thought that even the writer ha has given different names. Every person, because uh, we use uh, the important thing of the astronomy is that by using the stars, uh, people use it to na navigation. In the sense that people use by, use by using the stars, they use navigations. Uh, Right, those times uh, there, there, there were no maps and all. But by using the stairs, they can go to one place to another stairs, uh, uh, one place to another. I mean, not the stairs, one place to another, another world. And also by using the moons, uh, they, they can easily, by using the sun during daytime, uh, by using the sun, uh, they, they can use, uh, recognize the time. When is the time for harvesting and all? And uh, if you can see here in the big deeper, there are also different types of patterns is there. Another pattern is the asterism, it's, which is similar to uh, constellations. It is uh, <clears throat> connecting, uh, it's a star pattern with, within a constellation, but not an official constellation, asterism. These are even more like uh, connecting uh, a little bit up. If you see here, Asterism is within the constellation, but it is not constellation. It is the group of stars, just like big, deeper, little deeper. Uh, these are in the Ursa Major. You will see seven stars. Uh, Ursa Major is which is uh, directly opposite to Ursa Minor again. This uh, inside the Ursa Major and the uh, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, you will see big, deeper and little deeper again. Uh, these are the thing is that the, the most important thing is that during uh, ancient time, uh, they used to connect all those uh, stars and then they make some kind of sign. And then by using all those things, uh, they use they uh, they use when those Orion uh, Orion is about to rise, and some people thought that it is time for harvesting. Well, during that time, there were no clocks, no instruments, and were for measuring time. And also in the archaeology astronomy. Uh, these things we study here, just like in chicken it's, uh, and the stone hands. Uh, these uh, stone hands were previously they used for, if, if you watch the movie uh, series Merlin, uh, here also they recognize that uh, Merlin the magician before the Druids, uh, they, uh, they, they, they invented, uh, they built those stone hands for measuring time. These are the astronomical instruments you know, they use. <clears throat> if you see here right now, Constellations and um, this asterism. If you see this Pleiades, most of the time people also call the seven stars, which is very famous. The most visible sky throughout the year is the Orion Hunter, Orion Hunter, Ursa Major, which is also known as Seven Sisters, and the North Pole, North Star. These, these are the things uh, if you want to be good in the naked eyes, if you want to observe the night sky. Uh, these are the things which will be available throughout the year. If you can um, spot the uh, constellation of seven stars, Taurus, Pleiades, and seven sisters. If you can detect, if you can spot it, the night sky, that one, that means you can use that stars as a reference point to other stars, which means that you can easily uh, know where to spot Orion High, or where to spot uh, Big Deeper, Little Deeper, all those things, which comes. Uh, when you know how to spot seven stars, which is mainly visible throughout the year. Uh, in short, uh, all these things are the topic for today. Uh, in sum up, in the what is astronomy, we talk about the first thing is that the what is astronomy, we define it, and then different types of astronomy. And then there are two types of different astronomy. We study theoretical and observational astronomy, and in theoretical, mainly due on theory, and the observational, uh, we use uh, uh, direct detection, direct observations. And then in that we study light because light is one of the most important thing for observational astronomy. And then we come under the scientific method 
which is um, very important for every science student. We need to understand it. And then after that, we study again the um, difference between astronomy and astro astrology. And then after that, uh, we, we came about the uh, celestial objects. Uh, what are the celestial bodies in the, in the night sky and all? We study all those things, planets, uh, asteroids, meteors, meteorites, and all. And then we understand the scales of the universe. And then in the last, we understand the constellations. Okay. So all these things are the sum of the day we study. Whatever we are going to study in this uh, training session is mainly based on the basic things. It's a very important thing. And then the next thing is that we go to the history of astronomy from the ancient as, uh, astronomers to the modern astronomers, how the development of the astronomy from ancient to the modern history. And then we will try to understand the history of the universe in the bigger, perspe bigger perspective. And also we will try to understand uh, whether there is life in the solar system or whether, uh, whether there is life in the, uh, beyond the solar system. And also we'll study the mystery of the universe that's like the black hole and singularity, big bang, and the quantum integument. We will mainly focus on the future as well. These are today's session, these are all the topics, what is astronomy? This is the first session. It's a kind of the demonstrations and demo and all. So uh, anybody have any questions, uh, you can ask me here or you can ask me in the WhatsApp group as well. You can just send in the WhatsApp group. <clears throat> Okay, this is our today's session. Uh, thank you.